let's consider one of our first elements of art, and that is line. Line is absolutely fundamental, right? We use line for so many things, but we want to know, hello, how we can use it in our painting to make it more exciting, to work the whole composition together, to bring expression into the painting. There are so many different types of line. You have straight, curved, squiggly, angular, you have diagonal, horizontal, vertical. All of these lines can convey something different in your painting. So let's play with line a little bit and explore what it might be able to do for our painting. I am going to start with some basic figures that I have in my sketchbook. Here's my sketchbook. And I'm going to use some of these loose figures as just starting spot for, for line. I am working on a sandpaper, just kind of a hardware store sandpaper. And I'm trying to keep line. This is very soft and I'm using vine charcoal and it's seeming like the vine charcoal is really sensitive to this particular sandpaper. That head has gone too far out. Let's bring the head back in here. Head, always think head, and you always have to have a little neck on that head. So here's the basic gesture of this figure. The arm will come down, his elbow's just about at his waist and his hand is stuck in a pocket. So we'll kind of let that blend away. Let's put another guy behind him. I like this guy with a little fat belly. So these guys are standing there and they're friends and they're watching, I don't know, parade go by maybe. This guy's got a little bigger belly on him. Just lines coming down. and we want them going back in space. This guy's taller, they're going to go back in space. So the second man has to be a little shorter, but we also want to consider how they're standing on the ground. He also has his hands in his pockets because they're both just standing there very casually. And let's see, I want his head to sit back for it. This is the nice thing about vine charcoal. So I see how quickly and easily you can just play with that and erase it. I just use my fingers. All right, so there they are, standing. Bring this guy up, his head has to be a little higher. I don't want him to look like he has horns. Okay, so they're standing. Let's bring in some line with some color. I am going to choose a few colors. And all I have here right now are my new pastels because I just wanted to be out here playing and I have to keep thinking and I keep telling myself I am working with line. Shoot. Making the best. And they both kind of have their blue jeans on. see where's the light coming from I'm gonna have the light coming from this direction so there'll be shadows behind them I want a nice kind of curved line there to help define that shirt that he's wearing and this one there's his straight arm I'm gonna use arm. These lines are going around that cylinder of his arm. And he's behind him so you can't see all of that. Step back a bit, see how we're doing. It's kind of fun. Yeah, kind of fun. And I bought some green and I'm going to add green as 
a highlight. Cross that belly and see how I can use the line to follow the form of the body. And vary the line. Make it a little different each time. It will make it more interesting. I want some different colors. I'm going to pick up a lighter blue. I need kind of a peach color for the skin. This will kind of define those blue jeans. There's a shadow under that belly. You don't want to get in the way of that shadow. He's very proud of that belly. <coughs> Excuse me. Straight down here, there's pulling on his pants. Kind of lost the separation between his pant legs, but we'll pull that back in momentarily. <clears throat> Structure of the face, the cheek, the side of the nose, his face. Let's make him a little chunkier here. And we'll bring, whoop, wrong color. Follow the general form of the face. Looks a little skeletal because of that line right there. You want to adjust that at the mouth. It's kind of nice to be out on the deck painting again. Although the cars going by always make noise. Let's see. Yeah, just generalities. A little skin where his hand, before it goes into the pocket, catches a little light and then the shadow side. You don't need to spell it all out. Just indicate enough so it defines what it is. <clears throat> the viewer's mind will finish and complete those areas that are left unsaid. You don't have to spell out every single little aspect. Stepping back, taking a look, Got the general idea. And I need to admit, I haven't painted for quite a while, but it's like riding a bike. We get back on, just keep working. The more you do it, the better it becomes. That neck has gone out too far. Bring his nose in here a little more. A little bit of his neck. Suggestion of an eye, his nose, and a little mouth right there. Don't know why this gentleman all of a sudden has longer hair. It's because I was trying to cover up that yellow. we can bring in some atmosphere around them. <clears throat> Let's pretend that the sun is out. Don't want it too bright. We have a very limited palette with these new pastels. And I want to keep it in line. I think that will be too bright, but let's play with it. Nice diagonal, helps bring in the light from the sun, makes it feel like they are in a very sunlit place. 
I want to define the edge of that face better. I'm using the very edge of this pastel to help kind of outline his body. short. What I'm doing here is I'm touching the paper below and kind of lifting it as I go up. I'm doing it very quickly and with lots of energy. It kind of indicates grass. Again, we don't have to spell it out totally. Just enough so people get the idea as they're looking at this. Foot, shoe there, shoe there. That secondary shoe. Yeah, I want to define that a little more. Okay, let's see. Now I'm kind of doing cross hatching for some shading. 